there, it's Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com doing an event deck from Dragons of Care review. And first of all, this is going to cost $20, so or $25 I think is the retail price MSRP for it. So I've done reviews in the past, so let's see if this is going to be worth it. And one thing I'm going to actually do with this is I'm going to play it in today's F&M, and then we'll have a kind of a tournament report review of the playability of this. So the, the criteria I'm going to use is how the deck design, how well I think they did by utilizing the cards from Dragons of Tarkir to make an interesting deck. The playability, how well it does in F&M is going to determine um, because you're supposed to be able to play this in an F&M out of the box. So we're going to do that. And then do you get enough value out of this deck box? So those are the three criteria I'm going to do. So right off the bat, you get a dice. You actually get a pre-release dice, which is kind of cool because I don't think they've done the same pre-release dice. Maybe they have in the past. And then you have your sideboard here, some useless things how to play. And then one of the rares right off the bat is the Sova Dragon Claw, which is a bulk rare, so it's not worth anything. And I'm going to actually pull up the price guide on MT, uh, MTG Goldfish to see how much it's worth. I've already looked it up. It's going to be around $30 or $38 for the entire thing. And so you do are going to, as far as value is concerned, you get some nice value, but none of it is like cards that I think can maintain their price besides the Outpost Siege that's in this. So you get a Yasova and a Savage Knuckle Blade. Both of those are block. This is the most expensive card at the moment, which is Surak. Uh, the Hunt Collar, as well as the, the Thunderbreak Regent. So rare-wise, you actually do get your value on all the cards. I mean, these, all these three, I believe Surak's going for four or five right now, Thunderbreak's going for eight, and Outpost Siege is going for about four as well. All these are going to go down, so pretty soon this, this deck is not going to be worth the $25 purchase. I'm pretty sure you can uh, get all these pieces for cheaper than what the deck is going to cost. You have four Elvish Mystics in the deck, so they're going to help you ramp up. Some Golden Hinds are, ugh, this card is just gross. I don't know if I even want to play it. As by the time you get Golden Hind, I don't think, well, you can still ramp into your four drops. But neither of these help you get your Salvage Knuckle Blade. The Golden Hind does not help you get your Sova out on time. And it does ramp up to these two, but then you have to have double red for the Thunderbreak Regent. And then on your two drop, you're going to be wanting to cast something anyway with Air, Air of the Wild. So I'm not quite sure Goldenheim wants to be in here. You have Mogus's, Mogus's Warhound, which is not a bad choice for an aggro deck. You have Quadruple Fanatic of Xanagos. So I do like the Fanatic of Xanagos's in here. They are a very, very aggressive card. Um, and then Wild Slash Remove, I'm okay with that with the, the Crater's Claw. A Stubborn Denial. Double Lightning Strikes, which I, I, would, have, I would have preferred to have quads on the lightning strikes. A roast, which is meh. I'd, I'd prefer, again, a removal that could also be damaged to the face. But roast is fine. And then an arc lightning, which is definitely a good cyber card. I don't know if I could, I could main board it. Teamer charms I've never had luck with in Constructed. They've just kind of been awkward. You're not going to cast this for three mana, especially with the fixing in this deck. Um, being through Evolving Wilds and Frontier. Uh, Biviak, so... Uh, yeah, and then it's just the rest of its basic land. Out of the sideboard, you have some weird options. Rending Volley, I don't know, if really has a place in standard. You don't really kill anything. The only blue card you would want to kill right now that a Lightning Strike couldn't really... I mean, the only blue card you really want to kill is Master of Waves. So, I guess it could take care of opposing Savage Knuckle Blades with Rending Volley, but in standard, Rending Volley just isn't very good. It can't kill a Siege Rhino. It can only kill one Wing Wake Rock. There is just, like, Stoke the Flames is just better right now. And I kind of wish they would have put a Stoke the Flames in this, in this deck box. So, Starboard Denial is fine. So is Disdainful Stroke. In fact, I can, I can see putting Disdainful Strokes maybe main boarded. And in case the ice again is more hate against green and... Oh, this is that red and green card, so you can, you can tap something down. But not really what I think you'd want. Abs and Beastmasters, I do believe, need to be main boarded. I think they're great. They're an awesome card. You're usually going to have the, the card with the most uh, toughness. And so it's going to be drawing you a card. Reclamation Sages are incredibly good uh, sideboard cards, so I'm glad for that. Act of Treason, I think there's a, a few more fun ways to gain control in the format. But I'm, I'm okay with Act of Treason. And then two more Arc Lightnings, which I, I do believe are going to go main board over the Roast. I'm not sure. So I'll mess around with this. I'm, I might just play it as is. And in fact, I will. I'll keep the sideboard at the sideboard. There will be a little bit of, of differences. I'm going to bring these abs and Beastmasters main board. I think that it wants to be main boarded. And then we will put the roast probably sideboard or the team or char charm maybe sideboard. So I'm going to go ahead as far as my evaluation of this deck. Creativity, 
Ugh, I think that it might have wanted a Goblin Rattle Master. I, I think they could have easily printed a Goblin Rattle Master to keep, get the price down on it. And a Goblin Rattle Master would fit better in this deck than possibly like a... a oh, I mean, the four drops are kind of weird. Alpo Siege feels to me like it's a more of a sideboard. Maybe instead of Mogus' Warhound, they could have done like... I know that it would... It, the rares, they, they, they were kind of big on the rares that they want. Like, Crater's Claw was a good idea. Savage Knuckle Blade was fine. Yusova's okay. So, all in all, as far as playability, it's a playable deck. I guess we'll give the review after, after I actually play it to see how well it works, and then we'll go from there. Uh, as far as value, it's, it's valuable right now, but it is not going to be valuable within a month or two. This is going to be the price. Right now it's $38 for all the cards in it, if you were to price it out completely. But as soon as the, these start being opened, and especially like the Thunderbreak Regent is going to be the promo card in, in game day, it's going to come down a ton. So value-wise, it's about a B or a C, I would say. Right now, it, it might get a B. And then uh, playability, that, that's yet to be determined. Creativity, this was not very creative of a deck, but it is, it is building off of a deck that is actually doing okay in the format at the moment. So again, we'll do the evaluation, the wrap-up of the, of the deck. Oh, I missed some cards here, actually. Wow. There's a Boon Zader in here. I do like that. A Polis Crusher, which is not bad. A Miscutter Hydra, sure, and another Teamer Charm. So I did miss on those as well. But we'll go ahead and play this in the FNM, and I'll let you know how I do. This has been Kevin with RogueDeckBuilder.com. Thanks for watching.